today I wanted to give you a real quick shot on our layering. Now, if you've seen the webinar, if you've seen any of our PowerPoints, we've all seen our layering slides. You've heard, yeah, we chunk things into layers and then we aggregate them together into a C drive. But I wanted to sneak down here tonight and do a, a two, three minute video and get you to understand what's really in these layers and some of the basic concepts behind them. So right now, there's three types of layers. There's the OS layer, it's always at the bottom, the personalization layer, always at the top, and application layers. Now, I'd like to clarify what goes in some of these and tell you about their, their order and their priority. We say the OS layer, but it's really a misnomer. It's an OS layer because it has the OS S in it. And it can just be the OS, but it doesn't have to be. It can be more of a traditional gold image with the OS and applications in it and manage it that way. That, that's no problem. So it's really the gold image layer. Then there's application layers above that. And I, you'll notice I bulleted this application slash other. We call it applications because the vast majority of these will be applications, but really it could be anything that hits the file system or is removed from the file system. You could create a application layer that removes a file, that removes a registry key, that adds a new registry key. You could create an application layer that has printers. It's nothing but printers. It really doesn't matter. It's anything other than the operating system that's created by IT or anything other than a gold image. And then on top we have the personalization layer. And that's everything else. It's everything that happens to that machine once IT has created it and booted it. Now these layers are really, if we wanted to talk about priority order, let's click in there. They're stacked top to bottom. Top is the priority, bottom is lowest priority. And if it, the best way I've been able to describe this is imagine a series of, of those clear Petri dishes, right? And at the bottom, in our example, let's assume we've got a Windows operating system down here at the bottom, and it has IE6 because it's SP3 of, of Windows XP. And one of your application layers is IE8. If you imagine that those dishes are clear and at the bottom you see all these files, and when you lay that layer, that IE8 layer on top of the operating system layer, and it has just IE8 files, they basically are both there, but only one is presented upstream because the IE8 files cover the IE6 files and they stack top to bottom. Now can you change layer priorities? You bet. You can take applications. We have, we set this priority by default based on the applications that you install and, and when you create the packages, but you can also as an administrator change the priority of these layers and move one above the other. So it's up to you if, if you need to do that or if you find some conflict and you need to override the default layering uh, priority. Then the final thing that I want to talk about a little bit is this personalization layer. And this is interesting to me because most people kind of skip over this or they think it's interesting, but they're not sure what's stored in there. Imagine you get a laptop and the day you get the laptop before you ever power it on, it goes to that Windows mini setup where it asks you about your username and what do you want to call the computer and, and all that fun stuff. Imagine right at that point you took a snapshot of the machine. Then you ran through that startup, that mini setup. You did all these things. Anything beyond that snapshot, anything beyond what happened uh, once you booted that machine is stored in the personalization layer. Now, of course, you've seen the demos. We snapshot periodically against this so we can roll you back and we split the personalization layer. But really, the machine SID, application GUIDs, identifiers for applications, entries to HKLM, files that are copied, installed applications, profile changes, anything that happens is actually stored in that personalization layer. And the way that this works is that all these layers are stored in different file system locations inside our cache point. They're actually isolated from each other. So when a user writes a file, he's writing it to his personalization layer or to the machine's personalization layer. And when Windows updates, when Windows gets updated by IT or an application gets updated by IT, it doesn't impact what he does. Now you can override some things, you can roll users back, all that, but that's pretty much a, a two, three minute primer on how our layering technology works and a little bit better understanding about layering. Thanks a lot, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.